Riccio. Welcome to Joe on the Patio, WCYY. Uh, our first episode today, gorgeous day. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So happy we have this tent. I'm not getting rained on at all. Uh, first guest is Spencer Albee. Hi, I'm Spencer Albee. Welcome to Spencer on the Patio. Basically, it's a more of a, it's a veranda. Kind of, they've really been branding this as a patio <laughs> for a long time, but I don't think it's time for you to step in. <laughs> I it really just, I want to veranda. set the record straight. No one wants to come down and see stained on the veranda. No <laughs> 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 one like, wants to come down and see stained at all. I don't think that's Anymore. true. Anymore. <laughs> no, I think, I think really, more now than... I think to them now. Actually, I just saw, I think it was, I saw a video of Aaron Lewis from Stain yesterday. It was on Facebook. Did you see this? Uh, something about him being chivalrous in some way? Yeah, it was, it was kind of, it was maybe like a little more heavy handed and, and violent than I would have handled it, but I thought it was kind of like stand up at you and call those guys out. Um, there, was a, there was a girl crowd surfing, a you know, young girl, and some guys were like, being inappropriate, groping her and whatnot. And he stopped the show and just went off. That language encouragement to violence. That was the part I was you know, so. It was the first time I actually like thought about that band and did go to it. I was like, oh, okay. it sounds like he's been spending, you know, taking a lot of lessons from Fred Durst. <laughs> What's Fred up? <laughs> I don't know. What is Fred doing? I think I saw something. I think I saw a picture with um, Limp Biscuit in it. And this, they've got they got rid of the ape band, and now they've got some guy who some kind of um, skull demon. Some kind as a band member. As a band member, that's what what it looked like to me. That's important. Yeah, they have to have a character. It's important to have a character. (laughs) So Fred Durst is going to be out there in khakis and his, you know, whatever. He has to have a a character, a fantasy character of some kind. Like every band's kind of got a character. They do. I don't necessarily. (laughs) Ringo. Yeah. (laughs) Which are both very reasonable characters. Yeah. Both uh, akin to the Ape Man or the uh, Skull Demon. Yeah. I guess when you get to the point where the skull demon is an important part of your whole thing, you might want to just have a look at it. I think they're trying to trying to make you think of any like, kind of distract you from the music. Yeah, but I guess it would be hard to become introspective when people are throwing that much money at you to be just being rewarded for that kind of behavior. I guess are people still throwing money at this kid? Again, I, I don't. Now, how does that make you feel? How does it make me feel that I don't know what they're doing? Yeah, like you don't know what they're doing, or that like people are throwing money in the biscuit, but aren't throwing that kind of money at you. Oh, you don't even have a skull demon. Yeah. I, mean, I, I don't. I kind of just look, maybe speak for you. Thought itself. about picking up a skull demon? Maybe, maybe, maybe that's where I make a mistake. I mean, you have no characters per se. Fantasy I think characters. historically we've seen like a lot of. You know, not to say like I'm great and these people are terrible, but like you know, oftentimes you throughout history you'll see. Lackluster things to be celebrated. You know, so that's, that's, there's nothing that's not new. You know? well, I mean, Nookie was kind of the anthem. The Unfortunately, the, uh, second Woodstock, third Woodstock, whatever. You know. I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of people like listening that might disagree with us, and that's fine. We're just in here, so why not? Fred, we have an opinion. Fred's everybody. not currently getting rained on on a veranda. He might. He may. He may well be. <laughs> <laughs> His whole life could just be a series of being rained on in a series of ways. He just walks around the cloud over it all the time. Skull, skull demon in tow. You know, you know it would serve him right. Yeah. So you... I don't wish him any ill. Yeah, I don't I guess, wish him anything. I guess we're sort of justifying it. I can pretty much say this is the first time Fred Durst has crossed my mind. Well, it did start with Aaron Lewis and a transition because they had the whole... Oh, I get it. I get why I understand how we've arrived at this. Right. But... So, you, um, we originally were going to shoot last week. Yes. You had a kind of a, you pulled like a power move thing where you scheduled a 13 piece band instead of a rehearsal instead of this. I, I, in retrospect, I can see how my language in that text may have seemed, seemed like a power move. But I wanted to let you know it's like I wasn't going into a room to sit quietly by myself at a time, <laughs> but rather I had arranged. It was a rehearsal. I foolishly double booked myself, and I, I remain very sorry. It's fine. I mean, it worked you out. You expected me so reasonable like that. Did you want to? <laughs> yeah. You were looking for comedy, and I just gave you reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was looking for. Yeah, I guess I was looking for vindication. He was so. He was so disarming. <laughs> <laughs> when he apologized, it ruined everything. Well, I had bought four bottles of wine right. uh, for us last time. Because that's and the amount of wine that people would need for an hour-long wine. Uh, yeah. I didn't know how nervous we might get. 
nervous. <laughs> and I had to drink, you know, two bottles just to sort of take the edge off. <laughs> and then get into three or four. I mean, when you saw how quickly I drank the one in like ten minutes. I've seen you do worse. It's true. That's fair. Well, enough. then I finished them all right after, so they're gone now. But we have ideas, so. We do. Um, and then Sunday we were supposed to film again, but I actually couldn't walk because apparently my gout flared up, which was pretty amazing. Gout has always struck me as a very golden timey, fun timey. Uh, it is. It's game. very kind of Baratheon esque. Yeah, I, I just I know that John Hancock. Like that. That's what I know about him. Right. I think they call it the King's King. because basically only a king in the Dark Ages could manage to consume enough. Uh, red wine and, and rich food to actually cause this uh, condition. No, is that what causes it? Uh, it, it it's what kind of uh, it triggers it. It triggers it. It kind of increases the levels of your bloodstream. It's basically, it's like arthritis. It's like arthritis that is if somebody, if you're like lying down just sleeping, and somebody sort of busted in your room and just started taking a sledgehammer to your foot. That's kind of what it feels like. I do know what that feels like, which is hilarious. <laughs> I mean, it's a heavy role play. Yeah, <laughs> it's sort of like misery. But yeah, that's my thing. Like that. that's, that's yeah. the thing I do. Yeah, I just want something. I to, like to be James Con. Yeah. <laughs> I just want someone to bludgeon my knees and my legs. Yeah. It's for the best. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's what that's like, and then uh, and then you, I find myself that uh, you're in such in such pain that you do like the stupid little things to reward yourself, like. The other day, I went to uh, Dairy Queen. I saw. It. Yeah, I got myself a Sunday. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I took a picture of the Sunday. And I realized that my reflection was in the Sunday. Sunday selfie. selfie. Sunday selfie. Yeah. I, I, it's like when they find Jesus's picture on the toast. It's <laughs> same thing. Do it eat the big Oh. Ah. Ah. Yeah. You good? Uh.